Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are from Gilded Pear Gallery with a couple of shows that we're going to talk about. We'll visit with Gordon Kellenberger in just a few minutes, but beginning with Lauren Tucci, Gallery Manager. Lauren, welcome. Hi, Dennis. And Mary Zirin. Hi. Friend of the show. (laughs) <laughs> frequent guest here. Yes, frequent guest. Frequent artist guest here on yes. the Culture Crawl. Uh, and you have a new exhibit going up uh, at Gilded Pair called Unmoored. Yes. And of course, we're smiling and chuckling, but uh, the way you got into this was you started working on this because after your mom passed away, according to your artist statement, it's you, know, you say that it changed how you looked at and how you did your art. Yeah, I had this feeling of um, being unmoored, like floating. And I didn't feel grounded. And it changed how I worked. I used to do more abstract landscapes. But now I'm doing pieces based on fabric because my mother um, made all my clothes when I was growing up. And yeah, I found a lot of comfort. And making art was a way of kind of feeling more grounded. And this is a pretty big change for you. You've always, all of your work has been, I I would describe it as multi-material. You've right. always worked lots of different kinds of materials into your work, but to go all the way over into doing mainly fabric stuff, that's a pretty big change. And it's not necessarily fabric, it's more inspired by fabric, but I am definitely filling the whole picture plane where before I was cutting things up and gluing them together and it was more about shapes within a landscape, where now it's about an overall um, pattern kind of thing. So your mom was, you mentioned she made all your clothes. Yeah. And was she was she an inspiration to you for as, a, as an artist and encouraging this as you were growing up and later? Yeah, because she was an artist too. In addition to making clothes, she was a wood carver and she made furniture and things like that and did all sorts of art kinds of things and art kinds of things list me what a dorky thing to say but anyway (laughs) art kinds of things art kinds of things yeah no she was very inspired to make things and she really encouraged me to be an artist like most artists their parents don't want them to go into art in school because they know you're going to be like basically screwed and my mom was really excited about it she would come to all my shows and buy a piece and yeah. So you went into the family business. Yeah, I went into the family business. So my grandma was also an artist, her mom. So I'm like a third generation artist. Yeah. Have there been other times during your career when something happened in your life that caused you to just reframe or refocus or change in some way your, uh, your yeah, projects? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I had an injury when I was studying metalworking and jewelry making at University of Iowa. I I got tendonitis in my wrists, and then I got lung problems from working with all the chemicals. Oh, yikes. And so I had to change what I was doing. So I went to sculpture. And then after my dad died, I started doing the landscape paintings that I was doing. So yeah, those big life events do tend to change what you do. Well, you also introduced ceramics too. Yes, I started doing pan. Yeah, I started doing the pandemic. Listen to me. I started doing ceramics after the pandemic. So yeah. Big stuff. Mary's new exhibit at Gilded Pear Gallery is called Unmoored. One of two exhibits going on right now at uh, Gilded Pear Gallery. Mary, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And now let's bring Gordon into the conversation. Gordon Kellenberger, who uh, is a mana-based artist and has the second floor exhibit, correct? Correct. Lauren? Yes. Gordon, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Gordon, I have to say, I'm a bit of a fanboy. I've been a fan of your work for a long time and have really enjoyed it and have always appreciated the, the unique things that you have done, particularly with color. And I'm sure you hear that a lot, yeah. uh, that the rich colors that you use in your work really make them stand out. All those colors just flow out. <laughs> I just go with it. And yeah, I no doubt about it. I love color. <laughs> uh, as I said, you are, you're based in the Amanas. You've lived in the Amanas all your life, yeah? Yeah, I was born and raised in South Amana. Traveled a great deal, lived in Maine Amana. Traveled some more, lived in Middle Amana. <laughs> and finally ended up in High Amana. <laughs> Uh, and when did when did you realize that art was the thing that you were going to be doing with your life? Well, the my my first year of college, I was going to major in something else, but the art drew me 
a lot closer than the other subjects and majors. I've always enjoyed doing art when I was younger, and my grandmother was actually somewhat influenced on me. She used to draw for us at home as entertainment, <laughs> and so I started college, and I changed my major from physical education <laughs> to art, which is an unusual combination. <laughs> I've heard it many times. You don't take up an artistic career because you want to. You do it because you have to. All right. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I always say, don't go into art unless you really want to get into it. <laughs> Was this the striking use of color that is a hallmark for your art is that something is that you always do that or was that something that kind of evolved as time went by to a certain amount color bright color has worked out well for me and I, but back in the i think 95 1995 i started i retired from teaching and had time to do some new work and I wanted to do some work that would be different in a gallery, look different in a gallery than other people's work because you, you want people to notice it and take a second look, whether they buy it or not, take a second look at it. And uh, what I've done, I've done mostly agricultural subjects some portraits, but only of myself. <laughs> and what I did, I eliminated the, the certain colors. The reason my work is so bright is just the primary and secondary colors. I've eliminated all the neutral colors like black, gray, brown. Like I say, I, I wanted people to notice my work in a gallery as compared to everybody else. Yeah. We are in our area rich with artists who have whose history is doing landscapes. Grant Wood, Marvin Cohn. Do, what were you, did you have any influences as you were starting your artistic career? Actually, of course Grant Wood was an influence, not necessarily about color but subject matter. And there were a few quite well-known artists living in the Amanus. I've studied their work. But I also was a potter for 40 years. <laughs> oh. I was doing both, and I was also an art teacher in a man. I, after 40 years, I ran out of the ambition of doing two different <laughs> mediums. <laughs> Just ran out of pots. <laughs> yeah, ran out of pots, so to say. So I did pottery for 40 years and did painting as well. But I got to the point where it was... My artwork, my two-dimensional artwork, wall work, was selling real well. So I said, I'm just going to paint a while and see where I go. Now, this is a strange word, paint. Some people call it drawing. But because you're filling in the mass of your objects, it's just like painting with a stick. That's what I call it, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, we, we refer to them as pastel paintings just, instead of just calling them drawings. Yeah, it's not with a brush, but you work with sticks. And the one thing about pastel is you can't mix colors together and expect to get a new color. Oh, okay. So like you can with watercolor and oils and so forth. A lot of times you mix different colors. So you need about 200 pieces of pastel to work from to get the colors that you really want. Lauren, was there overriding reason to match Gordon's exhibit with Mary's, or was it more of a timing thing? It's all about color. <laughs> so both exhibits are very bright, saturated colors. Oh, yeah. Mary's actually introduced a, a little bit more neutrals into the mix, but both artists during this time of year as we go into daylight savings, it's a little darker outside. We've actually always focused on a little bit more colorful pieces during the winter months. And now that we have the second floor gallery space, we just thought it would be perfect to have both of our very brightly colored artists at the same time. Are these new pieces or some older works? Or? Oh, this is all work done since uh, September. Oh, wow. 
How many pieces? I think we have 12. That's... That, yes. Yeah. That's a fairly prodigious output, I'm guessing, yeah. for, for an artist, because you're, what, it's hardly even three months. I tell you, Germans like to get things done. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to mess around. They want it done. And therefore, it's a passion and a drive that way. The exhibit is called Colorful Surrounding. Correct. And is going on now at the Gilded Pear Gallery on the second floor, along with Mary's exhibit on the first floor, and the reception this Friday. Correct, yeah, from 5 to 7.30. And if possible, you'd like people to reply to the Evite and so that you can get an idea of numbers? Yeah. And how do they do that? Take a look at our Facebook uh, page. We've got the event there. People just say they're coming, not coming. It's helpful for us to prep for food and beverage. So let us know and then, or just give us a call, whatever. Any questions too. We actually had somebody yesterday ask a question about if they could just drop in whenever or if it starts right at five. You can just come in. Yeah. Attendance will not be taken. <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, if you're swinging in at seven o'clock, we're still open. Okay. All right. Just sounds like, sounds like a lot of fun. A great talking to, to Mary and to you, Gordon, as well about this, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the exhibit. Wonderful. You're certainly welcome. Thank you both for being here. Thanks. Yeah. You can hear The Culture Crawl live on the radio most weekdays at 1030, on demand at kcck.org slash culture, or subscribe using your favorite podcast player. Watch our videos on the KCCK Facebook and YouTube channels. Our producer is Lydia Kilgore. The Culture Crawl theme is composed by Vivian Shanley. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.